Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Duo Day Pack from Wander, which is a versatile 20 liter everyday carry and camera bag. And ever since I saw the Kickstarter video for this bag, I've been really excited to test it out. A while back, we tested out the Wander Provoke, which is still one of the best camera bags that we featured on the channel. It was really well built, it had some unique features, and I was very excited to see the ingenuity that Wander would bring to more of a traditional daily bag. And so I've been testing this out for the past couple of weeks, and so far it's been great to use. The bag definitely lived up to my high expectations. It's really well built, it has some great unique features, and it just looks really cool. So I'm excited to share it with you guys, and let's go ahead and jump in and take a closer look at the Duo Day Pack. Starting out with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. It has a very modern and minimal look, and it does have a little bit of a techie feel, but it's not overpowering. This actually reminds me a lot of the aesthetic on the Nomadic Travel Pack, but I just like how this looks much better. It's a little bit less boxy, it's a little sleeker, so really great job here. I also much prefer this to the more technical look of the Provoke, so it feels like it's gonna fit in much better into a variety of environments, whether you're taking it to campus, walking around the city, or even going into the office. As far as the materials, the bag is made out of a really durable ballistic nylon that seems to offer a ton of weather resistance and it feels like it's going to hold up well over the longer term. One thing that I did notice is that as you place sharper objects into the bag or it's very packed out, it does tend to get a little bit marked up. For the most part, I've been able to wipe away any marks that have come up, but it's just something to keep in mind as you have this bag over a longer period of time. In addition to the ballistic nylon, the bag has really great YKK zippers all around with a nice amount of covering. There's zipper garages, aqua guards, so it definitely feels like your stuff is going to be very well protected even if you get caught in some rain. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 20 liters, which is a really great daily bag size in my opinion. I was able to easily fit all the items that I normally like to take with me, and I really like that the bag maintains a very slim profile even when it's fully packed out, making it very easy to navigate crowded cities or to jump onto public transit such as a bus or a train. And so one thing that I'll note about the shape of the bag is that it doesn't stay perfectly rectangular when you start to fill it out. At the bottom, it tends to kind of splay out towards the sides and take a little bit more of a triangular shape. So that can tend to look a little bit strange. I do wish that they had just stayed strict like a rectangle, but I suppose that this adds a little bit more capacity. So that's just being a little bit more nitpicky for me. I still think that the bag looks great, but just something that I noticed as I started to pack it out a little bit more. Continuing along the outside, the bag has a very comfortable handle if you want to carry this like a briefcase. This has a very durable and comfortable seatbelt like material, so if you have to hold the bag, it's going to be really comfortable even when you have a lot of stuff in it. And then I was very happy to see that it does include an external water bottle compartment. So currently what I have in here is the same water bottle that you've seen in all my other daily bag videos, and that fits in there pretty comfortably. The compartment does have some elasticity here, so if you have a thicker item, it should be able to fit okay. As far as water bottles, I wouldn't go too much thicker than the one that I currently have there. It does tend to start to take some space away from the main compartment, and there's also some internal organizational pockets that make it a little bit harder to get things in. So I'll definitely call that out in a little bit when we go inside the main area. But for the most part, the compartment works really well. It's pretty deep, so if you wanted to store a tripod, you should be able to do so here. And I was just really glad to have an area where I could quickly access my water bottle. Moving on to the front of the bag, I was very excited to see that Wander kept one of my favorite features from the Provoke, and that's these little tabs here that you can combine with some accessory straps that they sell separately that add a lot of versatility to what you can carry with the bag. With these straps, you can attach larger items such as a yoga mat or a skateboard to both the front and bottom of the bag, so I really like the additional versatility that this adds. And then it's also nice that you can completely remove these straps if you want to give the bag a cleaner look and you don't need to carry anything that big. Jumping into the straps on the back paneling, the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I really like how the straps have been implemented here. They have a nice amount of padding, they're really soft. On the inside, they have this meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. And then I also like that they have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when you're wearing it with a lot of weight. In addition to that, it also has an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. And then a nice touch here near the bottom, especially if you have to carry a lot of camera gear, is that they have these tabs here where you can attach a removable waist belt that wandered cells separately to give yourself just a little bit more support. Continuing on with the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. It has a very rigid and solid injection molded foam, and it also has a nice amount of elevation to create this air channel for airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. I do wish that this had had the same mesh material as the straps as I do feel like this foam tends to get a little bit sweatier when you're wearing the bag with a lot of weight. 
And I also wish that this padding had been just a little bit softer. I do think that that's more of a preference thing. I like bags that have back panels that are really soft, like the straps. But if you like a little bit more rigidity on your back, this is going to be great. And for the most part, it still feels really comfortable as I've been wearing it for a longer period of time. Another nice feature while we're on the back panelling is that it has this really nice luggage pass through so that you could rest this on your suitcase while you're traveling if you want to take some weight off your back. And then the last thing that I'll mention here is that the luggage pass through actually has a secret compartment here that you can use to store more sensitive items such as your passport or a wallet. And this is kind of hard to get to so it's definitely going to be difficult for pickpockets. For me I really have to squeeze my finger in there to kind of move this out. Currently what I have in here is my field notes notebook and that fits in there pretty comfortably so there's a nice amount of space here for anything flatter that you want to keep a little bit more hidden. Moving into the organizational options, the bag has tons of great pockets to make your stuff very easy to find throughout the day. So starting out with this one here on the front, this is just a very simple quick access area. It's a pretty tall compartment and there's no sort of internal organization so your stuff tends to just kind of float around in here. If you have a lot of smaller accessories, they may all kind of sink towards the bottom in a bit of a mess. But for now, I don't really have that much stuff just because there's so many other pockets throughout the bag. So jumping in, the first thing that I have here is just a lightning cable to charge my phone and my iPad. Pad. And then I also have my laptop charging cable and brick. So not too much stuff in there, very easy to get to throughout the day since I tend to grab that stuff a lot. Plenty of space here, especially if you have some taller items such as a notebook, this is going to be a great spot where you can put that and be able to get to it quickly. The next area we're going to take a look at is this smaller quick access compartment at the top. And so I really like when bags have this sort of area so that I can reach down and grab some of my smaller accessories quickly. And there's still a nice amount of space here. So currently what I have is my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. And then I also have my Apple AirPods Pro. And then they also have this little clip and lanyard on the inside where you can attach your keys. Or in this case, all I have here is my Gerber Dime multi-tool. So a nice amount of space here and I also really like that the compartment has this soft fleece lining on the inside in case you have to place anything a little bit more delicate in here. So just a really great implementation overall and love having this simple area where I can reach down and grab things quickly. And so the last area that we're going to take a look at is the main compartment. And this is really jam packed with a lot of internal organization. But before jumping into that area, I want to talk a little bit about the infinite zipper that Wander has implemented here. And I really like this system. I think it offers a ton of versatility. And so we've seen zipper systems kind of like this in the Nomadic Travel Pack and in the 511 Rapid Quad Zip Pack. The Peak Design Everyday Backpack doesn't have a system quite like this, but it does have a similar kind of side opening area. And I really like that this bag has kind of blended both the Peak Design system and the Nomadic Travel Pack system to really allow you to open this in pretty much any direction that you want. So this gives you a lot of versatility and the different ways that you can access everything that's on the inside of the bag. You have zipper pulls here at the top of the bag and then also down near the bottom on both sides. And what this allows you to do is to access the main compartment pretty much from any direction. So if you wanna access this like a top loading bag, you have the ability to do so very easily. And then if you wanna open it flat clamshell style, the zipper goes all the way down. And then if you wanna take it a step further and open the bag full, what I will call butterfly style for the moment, you can release that even further and really just open it up completely to easily see everything that's in the compartment at once. But in addition to opening the bag up completely flat, since you have these zipper pulls here on the bottom, you also have the ability to quickly access the lower areas of the bag, which will also include the camera cube that we'll take a look at in a little bit. So this is really great when you need to get into your bag and grab stuff quickly while you're still wearing it. You can just swing the bag around, unzip from the bottom, and quickly reach in to grab whatever you need. So in this case, if I wanted to grab my Beat Studio headphones, I could just reach in and grab them very easily, quickly zip the bag up, and be on my way again. So just a really great system over Overall, I'm still kind of experimenting with different ways to use this, but for the most part, it's worked really well. The zippers feel very, very durable. One thing that I did notice is that as you're coming around the corner, sometimes it tends to get a little bit stuck. I imagine that this will break in a little bit and become a little bit easier as I use this bag for a longer period of time. One last thing that I'll mention about this zipper system here for anybody who's a little bit more security conscious is that it isn't very easy to lock this area up. So back when I reviewed the Nomadic Travel Pack, that was one of the big concerns with being able to access the bag from the bottom is that somebody could walk by you and possibly unzip this and reach into your bag without you noticing. So definitely something for you to keep in mind. I think you could probably get creative with this little tab here at the bottom and the zipper pull and maybe attach a lock if you wanted to. 
it's still not as ideal as having an actual way to lock it properly. For me, for the most part, I typically don't walk in areas that are too crowded for my day to day, so I normally don't have to worry about this. But if I was traveling abroad to a city that I didn't really know, it is something that I would wanna try to secure just a little bit more. So now we can go ahead and jump into the main area. I'll go ahead and open it up pretty much completely so that we can get a better look at all the different organizational compartments that are on the inside. As I mentioned earlier, there's 20 liters of capacity in this main area. So even with the items that I normally carry with me, there's still a little bit of leftover space at the top if I wanted to toss in something like a jacket. And so I really like that it's able to handle some of these bulkier items pretty well. So jumping in, one of the first things that I have here is my Beat Studio wireless headphones. And then I have my Able Carry stash pouch that has some of my smaller accessories that I don't want floating around. After that, I have a full-size moleskin notebook. And then I have a simple folder to hold my papers and receipts. And then the last thing here is my Levitate portable standing desk. Now with the compartment a little bit emptier, you can see that there's still a lot going on. Lots of nice organizational options on the back of this area. So starting at the top, there's just a very simple zippered compartment that you can use to store smaller accessories. Currently all I have in here is just my Samsung T5 portable hard drive with its cable. Besides that, there's not a whole lot of space here. It's a pretty shallow compartment, no sort of internal organization, just a very simple area that you can get to quickly. Next up, there's these two elastic and very well padded compartments that you can use to store delicate items such as a camera lens. In my case, I would probably place my GoPro in here or maybe something like my DJI Mavic Mini or a portable hard drive. I really like the amount of elasticity that these have. And I normally don't use these when I'm using this as just a regular day-to-day -day bag because I don't like any bulges that make it difficult for me to organize the taller items that I normally carry with me. But on any days that I'm carrying stuff that's a little bit more delicate, I'm definitely glad that these are here to use. Moving down to the bottom of the compartment is what I would consider one of the marquee features of the bag, and that's this pop-up camera cube, which is a very unique system that I hadn't seen in any other bags. I really like how easy it is to use. Whenever you don't wanna use it, you just push it down, and whenever you're ready to carry some camera gear, you pop it up, and it's attached with some Velcro here on the bottom that kinda of helps keep it in place. And this cube here has a nice rigid padding, so it definitely feels like anything that you place in here is gonna be very well protected, so it's gonna be a great spot for camera gear, lenses, or even a drone. In some of Wander's promotional videos, I've seen them put in things like shoes if you wanna take this as a gym bag. So lots of versatility offered here, not only for protection, but to just add some additional separation to the main compartment of the bag. And then if you wanna use this for camera gear, it also includes this little insert here that you can place inside the cube to help separate it out so that you have just a little bit more control over how everything sits in this larger area. And then this camera cube pairs very nicely with the infinite zip system. So if you have your camera here and you unzip from the bottom, it's very easy to quickly reach in and grab your gear if you wanna take some quick shots and then put it away very easily. If you wanted to add a little bit more security, it does have these flaps that come up that help kind of keep everything in place. Normally I just keep these down when I'm using the camera cube so that I have one less step, I can just kind of reach in and grab. So a really great and unique idea here. And I really like that this is actually integrated into the bag, which makes it a lot simpler to use than having to actually remove a separate camera cube and dealing with all the complexities that come with that. So this is just very quick and easy to pop open whenever you're ready to carry some camera gear. And then when you wanna use this as a normal day-to-day -day bag, very easy to throw it down and you're good to go. Moving back up to the top of this compartment, you have an area to store both your tablet and your laptop. So really nice wall padded sleeves here on the front. I just have my iPad mini 2, but there's plenty of space here for a full size 10 or 11 inch tablet. And I like that this compartment has a nice fleece lining to help prevent against scratching. And then it has this very well padded divider between the two areas to prevent any sort of damage. And then on the back, there's a separate area for your laptop. This is definitely gonna be able to hold up to a 15 inch laptop. Currently what I have is my 13 inch touch bar MacBook Pro, but you can see how much leftover space there is at the top. The compartment also comes up a nice amount, so if you have a thicker device, that should be able to fit in there pretty comfortably. So pulling my laptop out, you can get a better look at the inside. Unfortunately, this area of the compartment doesn't have any sort of fleece lining. I'm not sure why that wouldn't be included on both sides. So depending on which device you think needs some additional protection, you could possibly fit a smaller laptop into here. For me, for the most part though, I just threw it in here. It still feels really well padded and like my device is gonna be well protected throughout the day. One last thing that I'll mention about the laptop area is that I don't believe that it's actually suspended off the ground. At the bottom here, there is a nice amount of padding. So when I place my bag down on the ground, even though this area is making contact, it still feels like my laptop is really well protected and like it's not gonna suffer any sort of dings or dents. 
The next area we're gonna take a look at is the flaps of the main area. And there's a lots of different pockets and organizational options on each flap. So starting with this one on the right, on the back there is just a larger slip pocket here that has a nice amount of volume. I chose to leave this one empty, however, because I wanted to use this elastic meshy slip pocket here. I like that this one comes up a nice amount. And so if you have a bulkier item, this is gonna be a great spot to store it. Currently what I have in here is just my GoPro Hero 3 Plus, and that fit in there very comfortably, so plenty of leftover space if I had something a little bit bigger. And then moving on to the bottom of the flap, there is another small zippered compartment that's gonna be great for smaller accessories. Currently what I have in here is just my Apple Magic Mouse, and that fit in there very easily, but this is gonna be a great spot for any sort of cables, maybe some change, or even some memory cards that you just don't want floating around the rest of the main area. Moving on to the other flap, some more nice organizational options here, a slightly different layout than the other side. So at the top, you have these cool elastic bands that are gonna be great for holding maybe things like cables or dongles, or we have multi-tools or a flashlight. Currently what I have here is just my titanium spork. And then I also have a simple stylish and laser pointer combo. So really interesting idea here. Love the versatility that this adds. And then below that, there's just another large, meshy, kind of stretchy compartment that I chose not to use since these items were a little bit taller. But this is gonna be another great spot for any sort of bulkier accessories. If you have a larger laptop charger or maybe a thicker mouse, this may be a good spot to store it. And then the last compartment here on the bottom is another large and voluminous slip pocket. Plenty of space in this one. Currently what I have here is my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. So really like kind of how big all the different compartments are. It makes them very useful for the different types of accessories that you might have to carry with you throughout the day. One thing that I'll note about this pocket here is that it does share space with the water bottle compartment a little bit. So when I had the portable battery in here and I was trying to get my water bottle in, it was kind of getting caught on the edge of the battery. So just something to keep in mind as you're packing it out, especially when you have a lot of stuff, is that this compartment can cause a little bit of trouble for when you're trying to use this external pocket here. And then the last pocket in this main area is actually on the flap and this is a large meshy, stretchy compartment that's gonna be great for holding something a little bit bigger. So currently what I have in here is my GORUCK wired up and that fits in there perfectly. It makes it very easy to access when I'm trying to reach into the bag from the top. And so I really like the elasticity and flexibility offered by this compartment. Just offers plenty of capacity and if you don't wanna use it, you can just kinda of lay it down and ignore it. So just really like all the flexibility that this offers. Everything is very well thought out, not just in this main area, but all throughout the rest of the bag. So if you're looking for a really versatile everyday bag that's also gonna work well for camera gear and that's gonna hold up for a long time, this is gonna be a great option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Duo Day Pack over the past couple of weeks. The bag feels really well made and weather resistant, it's comfortable, and it has some very unique features, and I really like the overall look. And so you can currently purchase this on Wandered's site for about $220, which is definitely a little bit expensive, but you are getting a lot of value for that price. And I also think it compares pretty well to other similar bags that we've looked at in that price range. And so as I was testing this out, one of the first bags this made me think of was the Wandered Provoke. And although the bags don't look too similar, they have very great build qualities, they're comfortable, they have really unique features, and the Provoke actually has the added versatility of a roll top so that you can use it not only for your day to day, but also for quick trips. In addition to that, the Provoke has a lot of features that are really great if you have to carry a lot of camera gear. And it's gonna come in at a pretty similar price point. They do have a variety of different prices depending on the accessories that you purchase with it. But at around $200, it's pretty close to this one. And if you're a more advanced photographer that needs to carry some additional gear, or you're just looking for a bag with this type of build quality that's gonna be able to be used for quick trips, the Wandered Provoke is gonna be a great option to check out. The next bag this made me think of was the Nomadic Travel Pack, which is one of the most versatile bags that we featured on the channel. It's really well built, it offers tons of weather resistance, it's very comfortable, and it has the ability to be used as a daily bag or for quick trips. That one's not gonna have all the same features for accessing and organizing your camera gear, but it does have a similar zipper style opening, it opens flat, it has tons of great organizational options. And so if you're looking for something with a similar style that's gonna work a little bit better for travel, the Nomadic Travel Pack is gonna be another great option to keep in mind. Another bag this made me think of was the Peak Design Everyday Backpack, which we looked at a while back. That was a really solid kind of all-purpose camera and day-to-day -day bag. Very similar size. It had a little bit of a different aesthetic and I don't feel that it was as weather resistant as this. But the way that you can lay that camera out for camera gear is very unique and they actually just refreshed a lot of the Peak Design bags. So 
Hopefully we'll be taking a look at the new versions on the channel, but even the original compares pretty nicely to this if you're looking for something with maybe more of a professional and modern aesthetic, and it's gonna have a little bit more organization and flexibility with how you can lay out all your camera gear. The Peak Design Everyday Backpack is gonna be a great option to take a look at. If you like to style this bag and you're looking to save a little bit of money, another great option to check out would be the Boundary Supply Errant Pack, which is just a really solid and versatile bag. Great for day-to-day -day use. It has a lot of awesome organizational options, a really solid build quality. It's very comfortable to wear. And it's not gonna have all the same camera organization features as this, but you do have the ability to add some of Boundary's modular accessories if you do have to carry some camera gear. That one's gonna come in at around $150, so if you're looking for a solid bag that's got this type of aesthetic, that's gonna be a great option to take a look at as well. The last option that I'll mention here is the 511 Rapid Quad Zip Pack, which has been one of my favorite all-purpose EDC bags. That one has a little bit more of a tactical aesthetic, but it has a very similar zip style opening to this. It opens flat, it's really solidly built, very comfortable, and it also comes in at a great price point at under $100. So if you're looking for a really solid and versatile EDC bag that you can also use for quick trips, and you don't need all the unique organizational options that this bag has, that's gonna be another great option to check out. With that being said, the Duo Day Pack holds up really well against all those bags, and it's actually been one of my favorite EDC bags to use this year. So if you're looking for a really durable and unique bag that's gonna offer tons of great organizational options, this is gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the Day Pack and all the unique organizational and access features that it has. Do you like the Infinite Zipper? Do you like the Pop-Out Cube? And if there are any similar bags that you think I should feature on the channel, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to go ahead and thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you guys found this video useful, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.